comment on the sequential pathology of this? Yeah, I mean, uh, as I said, I've been uh, really looking into this for a long time. Uh, the original impression was, uh, yeah, it was a severe respiratory disease, but I'm changing my mind with the available evidence now that the issue is that compared to flu virus, flu virus doesn't have the spike protein. This has a spike protein and the access for the lung cells is primarily through the ACE2 receptor. And the ACE2 receptor, which is actually a angiotensin converting enzyme too. Uh, in fact, this enzyme is very important to uh, control the high blood pressure, hypertension. Uh, so if you in inhibit it, you also have probably high blood pressure along with it as a side effect. Uh, that's what I'm assuming, uh, with the spike protein binding to the uh, the ACE2 receptors on lung uh, endothelium or cells. Uh, so that leads to the internalization of the virus. So the virus is not just one protein there, spike protein. It has 19 other proteins, although it gets access uh, through the uh, uh, spike protein into the lungs. So there's something called nucleocapsid protein, and another thing we are investigating in more detail. Uh, and protein doesn't have a mutational rate compared to spike protein. Spike protein is getting rapidly mutated, and that's why you see so many variants. Uh, the, this mutation may be evolutionary in terms of the short evolution for the uh, virus, trying to get around the antibodies that are generated and trying to knock it down. So it keeps mutating so rapidly, especially at the receptor binding domain of the uh, spike protein. There are quite a few uh, are detected. And in fact, some of them are not able to be neutralized by the current vaccines that are generating antibodies. I won't go into the details on which the mutations are those. And so the idea is that spike protein gets inside. What happens next? Right. The next step is immediately what we thought was a cytokine storm. They just, because it's a viral particle, comes in, neutrophils, lymphocytes, everything just accumulate into the lung and try to kill the virus. In the process, it's also killing, they're making lung, lung injury. That was original thought process. Uh, the problem with, with this is that a lot of people are still dying with the treatments as immunomodulators like uh, ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, a beta uh, desin, I mean, which is these, uh, one of the steroids, and dexamethasones and other steroids. What I'm looking at right now is that actually that is not really happening because uh, the steroids and immunomodulators actually do the immunosuppression. So they actually stop the, both the T lymphocytes and B, B lymphocytes from, from um, uh, killing the uh, virus and uh, in, the, the in, in immunosuppression actually helps virus to replicate faster and more and that is actually taking us into the uh, hypoxia and extensive hypoxia is leading into the blood clots uh, because uh, the blood is uh, getting released from the blood vessels because of hemoglobin gets damaged and the hemolysis follows with the red blood cell lysis and the red blood lysis triggers the thrombocyte activation platelets and these platelets come and clot every, stop, stop the uh, try, trying to stop the uh, leakage blood leakage and that's when the blood clot starts and especially these blood clots are in a very microvesicle not in the bigger blood vessels so according to the pathology that i i'm not a pathologist but I, what i read from the pathology and these are the sequential events. So that was uh, the original thing that, yeah, you don't have any anticoagulants being used in the treatment. So very few people are using doctors. I've seen the cocktails of very doc many doctors. Yeah, some people may include ecosprin, but that's not enough at a level that the severe blood clots are happening. So clopidogrel is another one. It's very rarely people are using uh, those uh, blood thinners to prevent the blood uh, coagulation. So what's happening is oxygen is completely shut off. When the oxygen is completely shut off, it is actually not transferring the oxygen to other tissues, organs. As we said, the multi-organ failure. 
right? So lack of oxygen in other tissues. What is happen happening is a triggering uh, heart attacks. So basically, that's what it is. Uh, uh, oxygen is very important for all the tissues and lungs are not able to carry it anymore. So if you go to some of the people who have on, on CT scans, uh, that they have opaque lungs, which means the blood clots are extensive. You give and however much hyperventilate them with oxygen, because the blood clots are already there, they won't transport the oxygen anymore. So the pe person is going into an irreversible uh, hypoxia that is killing the patient. Basically, that's the pathology. But coming back to the vascular disease hypothesis, very recently people have shown that spike protein alone can cause the mitochondrial function damage, which is actually the reason why the lung epithelial damage is happening. Although, I mean, inflammation is causing some damage, but this damage cannot be protected by steroids or any other immunomodulators. So they, it's not the immune system is not involved anymore, or either in, innate immune system or adaptive immune system. But in the whole process, what's happening is they're giving a steroid, you're preventing the antibody production required to neutralize the virus. Remember, to, to date, we don't have a good antiviral drug to inhibit the replication at early stage of the virus infection. Given this, what are the treatment options, early, uh, moderate and severe? Vangala, you can take the, you can probably continue in that line of thought and then Darshan can give his take in terms of treatment options. Me or Darshan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vangala, uh, you sir. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So right now people have Remdesivir. Remdesivir, a lot of people are actually using late stage. Fevipiravir is there and all these drugs have proven not to work against like um, even in vitro also they have done and they looked at the rdrp uh, rna polymerase uh, they looked at the active site binding and they looked at the uh, all these various even hiv protease inhibitor also they looked at how do, can they inhibit the replication of the uh, coronavirus too but to be surprising none of them really attack the uh, sars cov2 replication Although, of course, Remdesivir has been approved for uh, emergency use authorization. Uh, some people have been using this IL-6 inhibitors. I mean, in fact, somebody called me the other day and said, hey, Manny, uh, we have seen this person who's getting one of these IL-6 inhibitors is actually, his IL-6 levels are shooting up the uh, roof uh, and even CRP levels. So basically the thing is that there is something mechanisms that we don't understand the cytokine storm. This is more complicated than the simple uh, uh, immune, innate immune system hypothesis. And that is where the vascular disease probably is playing a more role and people need to stop the replication early days. And also they need to start giving coagulants uh, in early stage so that you can prevent blood clots and oxygen supply can be enhanced. They are giving steroids, you are inhibiting the antibody production, so the viral replication is not going to be stopped. Antibodies is the later stage that they can neutralize the virus and stop the replication. So these are the sequential events. I am noticing it that we do need an antiviral inhibitors at the very first two to three days to ensure that you don't have viral replication going on without stopping it. Okay, that's great.